Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another year of Master Gardener webinars. We'll be starting our webinars right at 6 this year rather than 6.05. But before we get started, I just want to remind you about all the great things that Contra Costa County Libraries have to offer in addition to these gardening webinars. We have 26 branches throughout the county. Each branch has public computers, printers, free Wi-Fi. And not only do we have lots of books and movies to check out, but we also have California State Parks passes and Wi-Fi hotspots. Um, you can use your, you can go to the next slide, Andrea. Sure. You can also use your library card to check out eBooks, e-audiobooks. We have the New York Times digital version. You can get free passes to museums and other destinations. You can use Ancestry.com in our branches and much, much more. And it's all for free. So if you have any questions about any of these services, stop by your local branch. And now we'll move on to microgreens. So I'll pass it to the Master Gardener Coordinator, Terry. Take it away, Terry. Thanks, Serenity. Great to be reminded about all the services provided by the library. I'm uh, someone who reads books, but I had no idea that the library had so much to offer, thank you. Okay, so for growing microgreens, um, this is an exciting topic and we have a lot of people attending, so others must be interested as I am. Uh, just so you know, all participants will be muted and the video will be turned off during the presentation. Um, please use the Q&A icon rather than the chat to post questions to the hosts. During the presentations, um, we may answer some of those questions in writing and participants will have a chance to see those answers and to upvote on some of the questions, uh, but please don't put them in the chat. Um, as you know, it's going to be recorded um, and there's closed captioning available. And at the end, um, there will be a handout available for everybody. Next slide, please. So just a reminder on the UC Master Gardener program of Contra Costa County, our mission is to extend research-based knowledge and information on home, horticulture, pest management, sustainable landscaping practices to the residents of Contra Costa County. So our job is to get information to you. This is one of the ways that we do that. Next slide, please. Okay, now we're gonna launch into our talk. So we have a great speaker here tonight. Her name is Andrea Salzman. She's been a UC Master Gardener volunteer since 2019. She um, holds a gold badge uh, for volunteering over a thousand hours. Um, and I have to just tell you, that's a lot of hours um, since 2019. She has deep passion for learning and facilitating knowledge sharing with others. Um, previously, she's been the lead of the Speakers Bureau, and that is the group that is um, hosting this talk with the library. She, in partnership with Contra Costa County Library, started our monthly webinars and our YouTube channel, adding dozens of new educational talks. She currently is a speaker and educator um, in our growing Gardener Speakers Bureau and Community Garden Programs. She loves year-round edible gardening and finding creative uses for the things she grows. Her greatest gardening joy is growing and creating interesting things with her youngest daughter and watching her older daughter harvest and make her own creations with um, what's growing fresh in their garden. With that, take it away, Andrea. Awesome. Thanks, Terry. Thanks for the great intro. And thanks, Serenity, for co-hosting tonight. I also want to um, just acknowledge we have two amazing uh, Master Gardener volunteers answering your questions, Lydia Camara and Holly Sawyer. They're very knowledgeable. So um, type those questions in the Q&A as you go. They can either answer them or make sure they get slotted um, to be answered during our live Q&A. So um, thanks, Holly and Lydia, too, for joining tonight. So we have our first poll. I've got a couple polls tonight. Um, if you can go ahead and launch the poll. And then I'll give everyone an opportunity to read what the choices are. This is my way of, in a virtual way, trying to get 
to know all of you and where your interests lie in microgreens. So if you want, um, there's a number of answers, so you'll need to scroll down to see all of them, select all that might apply, and then we'll share out the results after folks have had an opportunity to fill out. Really want to see where your interest in microgreens are. Coming in fast. Keep your keep your uh, votes coming in. Looks like we've got about three fourths, and numbers are still clicking up. So go ahead and get them in if you need to. All right, looks like we uh, ended our poll and I'm gonna share the results. So this is a first step getting to learn a little bit about microgreens. I'm curious where you are in your journey and what your interests are. So it looks like the most popular answer was you wanna, um, you're gonna be buying seeds for the first time to grow as microgreens. So we'll definitely talk about not only what kind of seeds to buy, I'll give you resources at home, and we'll also talk about how to store those seeds so they last as long as possible. Some other popular answers are try new ways to grow um, microgreens um, into your meals. So I'll definitely share some really beautiful pictures of ways that you can do that. Hopefully that can inspire you to not only to grow it, but how to use it. And it's fun uh, bragging rights when you get to sprinkle them on top of fancy things that you share with other people. Um, also, you want to try different types of veggie uh, and herbs as microgreens. Um, so we'll definitely talk about that. And it looks like the, um, there's a couple other things wanting to know about what containers um, and something to grow as a project for a friend or family. And we'll talk about that. It was fun. Um, I gave this talk a couple weeks ago at the Doherty Station Library, and I had a lady in the audience who was there to learn how to grow them with her grandchildren. So they're definitely fun to grow with family and friends. So um, thank you for casting your votes and uh, let's go ahead and get started. I am going to take usually about a couple seconds for Zoom to catch up after we end a poll before I can launch to the next slide. So hang tight with me while it catches up with us. All right, it caught up. Here we go. So we're going to talk about microgreens. Hopefully I inspire you to love them as much as I do. To ground us, first I'll start off in talking about what is a microgreen so that we know really when we're talking about microgreen, what exactly is that? What stage in a plant's life cycle is that? I'll talk about some ways that I love to grow. Why I like to grow microgreens it might be something that you can relate to. We'll talk about to, you know, going back to the poll, what are different types of plants, uh, vegetables and herbs that you could grow into microgreens that might be something that you would like to grow. We'll talk about the several, several different ways that you could grow microgreens so that you could choose which would be the best way for yourself. I'll talk about tips about um, how to grow and how to successfully grow so that, you know, you'll get those lovely microgreens at the end of your growing journey. I'm also going to share with you some common issues that you might come across as you grow microgreens so that if you see that, um, you'll know what it means and how to tackle it and solve it. And then we'll also talk about when and how to harvest, how to store, and of course, how to enjoy. So let's talk first a little bit briefly about the four foundations of successful gardening. If you've joined one of our webinars in the past, you've certainly seen this slide, and there's good reason. These four items, soil, water, aeration, and sun, are really what we call or refer to as master gardeners as good cultural care. Really, when it comes down to it, for every plant, whether it be an edible, an ornamental, um, start something you're starting for seeds, something you're planting from the nursery directly, you're really going to want to make sure that you've got really good soil as a foundation. Now, microgreens don't grow in soil, but they definitely need a medium to grow in. So we will talk about that as far as and how it relates to microgreens. 
water. Water is so important to every plant. Some require a little, some require a lot, and some require a moderate amount. Microgreens water, besides buying seeds and good seeds, water is going to be the second most important thing. Your seeds will not be able to germinate with, without water. So we will talk a lot about water. Aeration is important, above and below ground. And with seeds, it's important too, to make sure they have adequate spacing um, and room to grow and breathe. And sun, light. Light is very critical uh, for all plants' health and success. And we will talk about what the right amount of light and sun is required to successfully grow microgreens. So we'll be talking and hitting on all four of these good cultural care foundational items when we talk about microgreens tonight. So I promised I'd start off and tell you what a microgreen is. Besides the things in the little plastic containers that you see in the grocery store, what exactly are they? What's the official thing that they're called? What microgreens are, are the young seedlings of veggies and herbs. So they're really going to be, you know, the first couple weeks of a plant's life. So every full grown plant starts off as a microgreen. Really what we're gonna be doing is harvesting the cotyledons of a microgreen. So if you've ever started um, a plant from um, seed, what happens is the first thing to pop up, the stem, and then it, these two little leaves. Those aren't the true leaves, which are will look different. They are the cotyledons. That is what is gonna get photosynthesis started with the plant. Um, and it looks um, very different than the true leaves. So um, we will be harvesting the microgreens before the true leaves um, uh, develop. So really what in the plant's first couple weeks of its, of its life. So a lot of what's gonna be going on with the plant when you grow microgreens is below the ground. A lot of roots are gonna be going because it's really looking for water. Water is what's going to help that, you know, send up that stem and then the cotyledon, which will then start photosynthesis. So that this is why we'll talk about the growing medium and adequate water is so important. So um, this is what the microgreen is, just that little itty bitty first stage of a plant's life. You might also hear sprouts. Sometimes sprouts are called microgreens and microgreens are called sprouts. There is a difference and I just want to point them out. You could tell by looking at this picture, they certainly look different and they are different in two different ways. One is the stage of a plant's life cycle that they are um, harvested and enjoyed and you know, eaten. And the second is how they how they are grown. Um, so a seed first becomes a sprout and then it becomes a microgreen. So really the first stage um, of the seed's life or the plant's life will be the sprouts. You could see here, when you're growing sprouts or eating sprouts, you could see the seed, uh, you could see the shoot and some roots. So it's gonna be a little bit more crunchy. There aren't any stems and there aren't any leaves. This is really gonna be in the first week of a plant's life. First five to seven days it takes to grow sprouts. Sprouts are grown in a jar without any type of growing medium um, and with water that's shaken. Whereas with microgreens, you're gonna be using a growing medium. This looks like coconut far that these beautiful microgreens are growing on. Um, and it's gonna take a little bit longer. It's gonna be about a two weeks or a little bit longer to grow those microgreens. And you're gonna be eating the stems and the cotyledons. So now you know, if you're if somebody serves you um, microgreens and they call it sprouts, you'll be in the know um, that they are microgreens truly. So a seed becomes a sprout and then a microgreen. And so today we'll be focusing on uh, microgreens, not sprouts. So what are some of the reasons that you might um, want to grow them? They are very trendy, that's for sure. A lot of restaurants you go and you might see them and it might pique your interest. But one of the things I love about them is that you can grow them indoors and you could grow them year round. So you don't need a large garden. In fact, you don't need any outdoor space. They are grown indoors. So if you have an indoor space and a counter that can fit them, you can grow microgreen. So it's very accessible. If you're not able to go outside, maybe you don't like to go outside, um, you know, it's something that you could grow really easily on the countertop in your bathroom, in your kitchen, wherever. Um, so it's very accessible. It's also very clean. You don't need any soil. 
Um, so it's not dirty. You're not going to get your hands or your fingers dirty. Um, so if that's something about gardening that's not something you particularly like, then maybe microgreens is for you. Um, you don't need any soil. They also grow very quickly, within a couple weeks at the most. Um, some a little longer for those that grow longer. On average, a couple weeks from the time you start them to the time you start eating them, you'll have microgreens. Whereas for a whole plant to grow, it's going to be take, it might take, you know, months to grow until from the time you plant it till the time you get the vegetables or fruit. So it grows pretty quick. It also requires minimal care. Um, really just making sure that moisture is even that we'll talk about is really the care that's required. It takes up very little space. You as a grower get to decide how much space do you want to take up with microgreens? Do you want a small little tray? Do you want something big? Do you want lots of um, trays all over the place? You get to choose. Um, so it takes up as little or as much space as you want. You could also grow year round. I know for myself, I grow a lot of stuff from seed and all through early fall, you know, in the spring and summer. And the winter time is when I grow a lot of microgreens because it's when I kind of pause, come indoors and, uh, you know, slow down a little bit on my outside gardening. So I like that it fills up that time in my life for me, time of the year. They're also incredibly nutritionally dense. So it's said that they have five to seven times the amount of nutritional value of a full grown plant in that tiny little stem. Um, there's also a lot of phytonutrients um, in, um, in microgreens. So that's really, those are really um, important things for good health and disease prevention. Um, so you have a lot of really great um, health benefits to microgreens as well. So if you have a picky eater who's not particularly fond of vegetables, but needs that nutritional value, sprinkle little microgreens and you'll get five times the value in a little teeny bite. So, you know, that might work for you too. If you're not a huge fan of the big full grown vegetable and the cost savings, um, you know, you will buy at the store a little tray of microgreens for around $4, especially when you start buying seeds in bulk, you're just going to be paying pocket change to grow a container of microgreens. So it's quite a bit of cost savings. And the, the, the flavor is very flavorful, really strong. So you get a really nice pop of flavor for that little sprinkle of microgreens. So those are some of the many reasons I love growing microgreens. So I saw a lot of people were very curious about what type of plants you can grow from microgreens. Really most vegetables and herbs you can grow from microgreens. I have some of those um, wonderful vegetables and herbs listed here. You can see we have beets, arugula, cabbage, radishes, um, peas, spinach, parsley, and basil. So all of these things can be grown as microgreens. And if you think about the taste of radish that or arugula, that more peppery taste, that's going to be like that pop of taste that you'll have on, on, your, um, on your plate or a little bit of basil microgreens maybe on your spaghetti. So you can add that little extra bit of flavor um, and decoration on top of your plate. When you look at microgreens, there are slow and quick growing microgreens. And I do want to pause really quick at the end, as Terry mentioned, you can have access to a handout. There'll be a QR code to take a brief survey, and then you'll be given, um, a, you'll go directly to a PDF of our handout. Um, there's all a lot of this information, including the quick and slow growing microgreens. And there's also a really great book that I found that has an alphabetical listing of plants you could grow as microgreens. And it will tell you, you know, how many days to harvest. Is it slow growing, fast growing? Um, so it's a really great resource if you want to get really into this um, and find out what other things you could grow. So microgreens typically fall into two categories, slow or quick. So um, really depends on what flavor you want and maybe how long you want to take to grow your microgreens. Here listed on the left are some quick. So those are typically from the time you start your tray of microgreens to the time you're harvesting, it will take 10 to 15 days. So about a week and a half to two weeks. Some quick growing microgreens are things like arugula, broccoli, cabbage, kale, kohlrabi, mustard, amaranth, radish, and spinach. Things that take slower to grow are things like basil, beet, buckwheat, cilantro, dill, and sunflower. Those are about 18 to 26 days. So really two and a half to three and a half weeks. 
herbs in general are going to be um, a lot slower growing um, and take longer. So something to consider, especially if you're interested in growing my microgreens as herbs. But I'm going to zoom in this picture right here in a minute. I'll zoom in. I'm I'm growing um, one in a hydroponic tray, which we'll talk about beets. And the other one, I believe, is uh, kohlrabi that I'm growing on the right. And I'm going to zoom in just so you could see. So beets are slow growing. Kohlrabi is a faster growing. I started these trays on the same time. So you could see, look at the, the leaves, the cotyledons haven't even opened up. They're quite a bit shorter. It, where if you look um, over at the other tray, the cotyledons are fully open and growing and they're about an inch taller. So that's this is just a really good illustration um, about just to see a picture of two slow and quick growing that were started at the same time and you know how they look. Um, so yeah, there's definitely some that are slower than others. And it's good to know. So if you're expecting to you know, have those microgreens ready for a dinner party, you could kind of count backwards to know when you need to start your microgreens. So that's why that's important to know. So I'm gonna tell you, I mentioned at the beginning that microgreens are pretty easy to grow. Honestly, like collecting all of the supplies, including seeds is gonna be the most time consuming part. I promise you that. So let's talk a little bit about what um, supplies are needed. Um, you need seeds. Seeds are gonna be the, the probably the thing that takes you the longest amount of time. And we'll talk about later about selecting good seeds and storage, but you'll need seeds. You'll need a spray bottle with water, and we'll talk we'll, about water a little bit later and the importance and the quality of water needed. You need bright light. So you're going to need 10 plus hours of light. And if you say, well, I have got the counter space, but I don't have a window near the counter space, you can also use a grow light. Um, a lot of grow lights now are pretty inexpensive. You could get them, you know, for $20 or under. Um, and they even, a lot of them have timers. Um, so you can get that 10 hours of light through your microgreens um, using a grow light if you don't have a natural light source to grow your microgreens in. You'll need scissors. That's what you're gonna use to harvest your greens. Any old scissors can do, it doesn't matter. I would just say whatever scissors you use, just make sure they're nice and sterilized. Cause again, you know, you wanna make sure it's food safe. And you're going to need a dome or a cover. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll talk more. You know, you have two different methods that you can grow microgreens in. And we're going to talk about both. If you choose to grow in a tray or a container, you're going to need the tray itself to grow in. And I'm going to give you a, a number of different options of trays that you can choose to grow from. And you're going to need a sterile growing medium. So I mentioned we don't use soil. We need something sterile um, that doesn't have fertilizers or anything in it that will, or you know, that will help the plant grow. Um, it just needs sterile um, so that uh, the seed can just, you know, absorb the water and grow from there. And we'll talk about a couple different options for a sterile growing medium. If you're choosing to grow hydroponic, and by hydroponic, what I mean is that you're using a vessel that holds water and a mesh screen. So here's an example right here. Um, this is a vessel that holds water and you uh, this mesh screen, the holes are super, super, super small. So it'll allow water to evenly come up to the seed. So the seeds are in regular contact with the water um, and but the seeds won't fall through. Um, so if you're doing hydroponic, you'll need to have a container and that has a screen. And I also suggest using hydrogen peroxide um, which I have pictured right here. I just squirt, um, do kind of a, a couple little squirts into my hydroponic container about this size. So a little bit more if you're using a bigger container, that's just gonna help keep the water fresh. Now there are certainly times that I've forgotten that and they've grown certainly fine, but I like to do it as just a kind of insurance policy. So you could see, here's a fun picture a couple weeks ago. Um, I gave this talk in San Ramon and we set up the station. So what I like to do is I gather up all my supplies and I kind of just put a little, put them in the order that I'm gonna do. I've got my container, my growing medium, water and seeds. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step how to do it. So these are all the supplies that you'll need if you're thinking about growing microgreens at home. So seeds, seeds are gonna be the most important. You wanna know what type of plant you wanna grow and you wanna get high quality seeds. 
So let's talk a little bit about that. You want to get garden seeds. Um, so you're not going to be buying things that are, you know, for commercial growing. Um, so you could go to your local garden center. Um, you do want to make sure to get um, organic seeds. Um, those are going to be untreated seeds um, and they're going to be a little bit higher quality. Um, so for sure, you know, if you're looking for a basil, um, you know, you could go to your garden center. There's also a lot of online um, suppliers of seeds too. So just make sure that they're of a good quality. Um, and usually on the back of them, there's like an expiration date or a, um, a package or harvest date. You want to make sure that that packaging date um, or that harvest date wasn't many, many years ago. Most seeds are gonna last for about five years. So make sure your seeds have been harvested recently um, because with each passing year, even those seeds that are stored properly, um, the germination rates will go down. So make sure if you're paying for the seeds that they're, uh, look for that um, packaging or harvest date to make sure that you're getting new seeds and that they're organic. Use a reputable supplier, you know, so if you're buying at a garden center or known seed companies, seed catalogs, those are considered reputable suppliers. Um, so, you know, you go down to your local nursery, they're going to be selling you seeds of good quality. I also say start small. Once you start finding what microgreens you like to grow, you can buy in bulk and that will reduce the cost, certainly. But when I first started growing microgreens, I just bought the little seed packets. Um, you need about one teaspoon for kind of most of the small um, containers that you'll be growing microgreens in. So you don't need a lot. So it's fun to kind of try a lot of different ones to see which you like growing before you buy bulk. So I always say start small, buy a little packet that looks like this. And then once you know, okay, I really like my favorites, I really like growing broccoli. And there's a, a greens mix that has like, um, you know, broccoli and some field greens in it. Um, I just buy those in bulk. So it's a little bit cheaper. So, so those are some things to think about when selecting seeds. I mentioned seed viability. So most seeds, if they're stored properly, are going to, you know, last and have good germ germination rates for about five years. They do decrease with age. So what does that mean? That means you might have to... Um, you know, sprinkle more seeds on um, to get the same amount of microgreens. Um, seed viability will go down not only with age, but if they're not stored properly. So how to store them? You could store them in a cool, dark place. Refrigerator and freezer are perfect to use. Um, I, I use like the, my seeds that I'm growing for microgreens, I just keep in an airtight container in my refrigerator, um, in my kitchen. If I have bulk, sometimes I will put them out in my um, in my freezer because um, I might not use all of them and it's going to be, you know, in my house for a lot longer. If you do use a freezer to store your microgreen seeds, um, do let them come to room temperature before you start um, putting them on a seed tray um, to start growing them. And that's going to that's going to help um, help you grow them a little bit better. You also want to put them in an airtight container and a watertight container is good too. Um, you could use a Ziploc bag that won't necessarily be watertight. Um, so if you have concerns about that because of like condensation in the refrigerator or freezer, um, like a, a Tupperware container or like an, uh, a mason jar like it showed in this picture is really ideal. So those are some tips on how to, you know, keep your seeds viable for as long as possible and where to store them. So I mentioned there's two different types of growing methods and, you know, it's for you to decide. Sometimes I grow both um, hydroponic and in trays. So um, if you grow in trays, you'll want to make sure that the tray um, is at least an inch in height and it has proper drainage holes. Um, these I love using recycled um, berry containers. When we did the, when I did my talk out at the library a couple of weeks ago, um, you know, I brought, I collected a bunch of old berry containers and I passed them out to folks. They're really great because they're the right height. They fit a lot of the um, sterile growing pads and they have drainage holes already in it and a, and a lid at top. So super, super great to use. And one less thing to buy, right? These seed trays come in different sizes. Um, if you use them, I suggest, um, you know, making sure that they have holes. 
not all of them come in holes. So if you buy flat trays like this, what I would suggest doing is poking holes in them to allow drainage and then doubling them up. And I'll talk about bottom watering. So this will really help when you, you know, bottom water the tray. Um, you could let it soak in there and then dump the extra water and then allow any excess water to drain out, which you could then dump. So drainage holes is super important for the bottom watering, which we'll talk about, um, as well as to make sure it doesn't get too wet, um, which could um, prevent your seeds from growing. Hydroponic is the other option. So again, this is an option where it's a lot easier, quite honestly. Um, and I find that it grows a little bit, you know, hardier. Um, really, once you fill up the, the tray and you, with the water and sprinkle the seeds on it, you just let it grow because it's the water is filled up to the mesh screen. So the seeds are perfectly watered. You don't have to water it. And then as the roots grow down into the container, the plant's growing up. So the roots, as the water you know, level is going down, 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 the roots are reaching down to it. So let me, let me zoom in there a little bit so you could see this. So this is the seed. You can see the seeds on the bottom and the microgreens that are growing. So these are full size microgreens that I've started to harvest. And you could see that the roots have grown all the way down to reach the water. And it's really interesting, um, even when I peeked under the screen, even right after the seeds just germinated, the, the, the roots are already growing down there into the water. So um, it really is self-watering, which is really nice, super convenient. So um, selecting a growing tray is an option. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about what kind of trays to grow. You want to make sure that it's flat and shallow. So you don't want something that's bumpy and ridgy because you know your seeds might all fall and pull to one side. That'll keep the, the seeds nice and stable on one same level. You wanna make sure for sure there's drainage holes because um, you're gonna be bottom watering them and you want to make sure that any excess water drains out. You um, want to avoid portioned off containers. So see a container like this. These are really great if you're starting like something from seed that you're gonna to grow to a big plant. Um, but when you're growing microgreens, you don't need something like that. In fact, you don't want it because you're gonna be scattering a lot of trace in a small area that's almost gonna be growing you know, closely, very densely populated. So it looks very lush like this. You're not growing one single plant at a time, you're growing many, many, many on one tray. So avoid portioned off containers. Um, hydroponic. Um, if you're using hydroponic, it's going to be growing water below um, the screen. Um, so you, you don't need to worry about any type of growing medium for the um, hydroponic. If you are growing in a tray, you will need to determine what kind of growing medium you're going to use. And I'll tell you about a couple different types. The ideal, what you, you do not want to use, um, you know, soil from your garden, you want it to be sterile. So you don't, what does that mean? You don't want it to have any fertilizer or compost or anything that you would typically want to help a, a plant grow and flower and fruit. Uh, you want something that's just going to maintain equal, um, you know, moisture because that water, what the seed needs to grow is water. And then once it germinates, it needs the light and then water throughout its life cycle. So really finding a sterile medium is ideal. Coconut bar, and I'll show you a picture on the next um, uh, slide, is really ideal. It's really light and fluffy, and it, it looks like this, here's a picture of coconut bar. It's really light and fluffy, um, so you'll smooth it out in your growing container, um, so it, it'll be an even, it's nice and even, you know, so you're your seeds won't fall all over the place. It'll just be right there on top. And um, it, it really, really helps maintain moisture. Um, and so you're, you're, um, once you water it, it'll not only stay longer, um, but it will, um, you know, it'll, it'll just, it'll maintain really a nice, even moisture for a longer period of time. Again, you don't want, if you use a potting mix, you can try. I really would discourage using a potting mix, um, you know, People have used, and I have read articles that say you could use potty mix, but make sure it's one without fertilizer or compost. It's really hard to know what's in potting mix. 
Um, they will sometimes tell you what's contained. A lot of times it is gonna have compost or some type of fertilizer or something that will act as a fertilizer. Um, so for that, you know, those type of things will give your microgreens a really off taste, um, which you don't want. Um, you want it to have that strong, pungent, you know, taste of a, of a cilantro or basil or, or broccoli or whatever you're growing. So for that, I would kind of stay away from potting mix or again, for sure, fertilizer or compost. You can also use sterile growing pads, and I will show you what those look like. They come in a lot of different sizes. So, you know, if you're using a bigger tray or like the smaller berry container, you could find growing pads that fit those nice and snugly, um, or you could piece them together uh, side by side. You could also use recycle, you could use paper towels. The one thing that I will say about paper towels is yes, you can use them but they're gonna require um, a lot more maintenance because it's gonna dry up. A lot of the growing mediums, like the growing pads um, that I'm gonna share with you, they're used because they, like coconut bar, really retain moisture, water moisture really well. Um, so you have to water maybe once a day. Paper towels, you're gonna have to water more frequently. So some, definitely something you could use. Um, it's just gonna require a little bit more maintenance. So something to be aware of. So here's some examples of growing mediums. Coconut bar is one that I highly recommend. It will typically come in a block. I included this. This came with um, a bulb that I had purchased around the holidays. You might have purchased one and noticed this little like, it looks like a big coin and it says add water and then it puffs up and it's this fluffy mixture that kind of looks like the color of soil. That's coconut bar. So you might have seen it and not even realized what it is. Um, this block right here is about um, one pound and it's about eight inches big by a couple inches high. Um, if that's how coconut bar is sold. Um, so you could throw it in a cabinet to store it. When you're ready to use it, I just put it in a five gallon bucket and I fill it with warm water. You know, I cover it and then it will puff out and it makes about five pounds of coconut bar. So then I'll just cover with a towel and have it there, um, you know, in my garage when I need it. So coconut bar is a great alternative. If you want just some type of product like a growing pad that you can store in a drawer and um, just use when you need it, there's a lot of different um, options. Recycled wood are really great options. This particular um, size of recycled wood is what I use for the berry containers. It literally fits it perfectly. Um, and then jute is also another growing medium. Hemp is another growing medium. Um, these are all, you know, really wool. They're made of recycled material and they really are known to be able to um, keep moisture, you know, for a longer period of time, which is why they're selected. Uh, read, read the um, labels. You just want to make sure that you select a growing medium that does not contain plastics. So water. Water is certainly very important. We'll talk about that when we talk about how to grow microgreens. I just recently added this slide because as you start to read books, articles, other things about growing microgreens, especially if you're going to be growing hydroponic, you might see something in an article or book that, or a video that you're watching that says, you know, microgreens uh, prefer water that's slightly acidic. So what does that mean? So um, on the pH scale, um, it goes from anywhere from zero to 14. You know, pure water um, is considered ha to have a pH of seven. Um, the more acidic it is, it's going to be zero to six, so it will be below seven, below that pure water. If it's more alkaline, um, it will be eight to 14. Um, really, um, it, you know, when you grow hydroponic, it is true that it does grow a little bit better if it's slightly acidic. And when I say slightly acidic, it's a six. So a pH of a six is ideal if you're growing hydroponic, but let me tell you, I use my tap, I grow hydroponic almost all the time and I've never used or checked the pH of my water. Um, here in Contra Costa County, um, our pH is about 8.5. So slightly more alkaline. Um, that's just, just a little bit above, you know, that pH of a six that's ideal for microgreens. Um, so I wouldn't be too worried about it. Um, I, I just wanted to mention that. So if you read it, you'll know about it and you'll know 
my water that I have here from the tap is perfectly fine. Um, if you are noticing some trouble growing and you've got good seeds and you're doing the water, you could try adding a little bit of lemon. So adding a little bit of acid, vinegar, that's going to bring the alkaline down and make it more acidic. So um, if you're using tap water, you could add a little bit of lemon or vinegar. Um, if you have more acidic water, you could add a little bit of baking soda to push it up and make it a little more alkaline. But the main thing really to, to remember when it comes to water is just maintaining consistent moisture and knowing that our Contra Costa water straight from the tap is going to be A-OK. -okay. So now's the fun part. I'm going to walk you step by step by step how to start growing microgreens from a tray and then from hydroponic. Then I'm going to play a video where you could watch me doing all these steps. So for, I'm a more visual learner. So I know the video I, is added for people like me who like to see it. Um, and um, But I'll walk through step by step. So you'll get to hear me talk about it twice. Um, and again, this will be up on our YouTube. And I actually have this video in a short um, shorter version already on YouTube. So you could play this back at any time. So one of the first things you're going to want to do or think about doing is soaking seeds overnight. This is 100% optional, especially for smaller seeds like herbs um, or lettuces, um, uh, you know, broccoli that are smaller seeds. You really don't want to soak it because they're so small. They're going to just get all stuck together. Um, if you do soak like larger seeds, it will help on average, um, you know, speed up your growing time by about a day. Um, so if you're in a little bit of rush and you're growing seeds that are a little bit larger, soaking might be an option for you. You're then going to want to fill your tray with your growing medium and moisten. So here is a picture um, um, of two different trays. Both of them I'm using berry containers as an option. This first picture is using coconut coir. Um, with my coconut coir with these berry trays, there are a lot of drainage holes. So I put a paper towel on the bottom so the uh, coconut coir doesn't spill out. Um, and then over here, I used a recycled wood growing medium. So you're going to want to fill your you know, tray with your growing mediums. That's the first step. Then you're going to want to scatter your seeds. So for um, a container the size of these berry containers, you're going to use about one teaspoon. So you'll scatter them easily. And you could take your spoon and kind of tap, tap, tap you know, so it slowly gets on and just make sure it's pretty even. Um, and let me do a little zoom up for you. So see, you could see in this, when I zoom up, you'll see seeds are pretty much scattered everywhere. Um, when I did this um, at our community garden, one of our community gardens up in Concord that our program supports, um, this uh, participant was asking me, did I sprinkle enough seeds? And so I told her, you know what? It looks like you're missing some space around the edge. So I had her grow back and fill in those kind of blank and empty spaces. So the key is just kind of evenly um, distribute those seeds. And then you're gonna wanna mist with water. Um, so what you're going to want to do, um, this, this, let me back up a little bit, the growing medium, you do want to moisten it. Sorry, I didn't say that. So if you have the coconut bar, I highly recommend you get the right moisture level of that coconut bar in that bucket. Um, you want it to be light and fluffy and like, kind of like the, the wetness of a wrung out sponge. If it's too wet, you're going to drown your seed. So you want it that light and fluffy. Um, so get it to the right um, moisture before you put it in the tray. Um, if you're using a grow tray, you'll place this uh, growing medium in the tray. And then I get a plate, fill the plate with water and just let it moisten on the plate. So that grow pad's nice and moist. Okay. Then you scatter your seeds and then you mist it. So you're getting, misting it on the top. That's going to get both the bottom will be touching water. Um, you know, touching the growing medium, and then you're getting water on the top to mist it. So until, you know, the, the seeds germinate, you want to make sure both the growing medium is wet, and then you mist on top to keep it um, wet on the top as well. And I usually do that about once a day. 
because um, if you think about when you grow seeds, usually it, they're underground, so they're, they don't dry out as fast because they're not exposed to as much air. With microgreens, you're growing on the top of the surface, so they will be growing, they will be drying out a little bit more um, quickly. So you just want to make sure until they're germinated that that medium is nice and moist and that you spray the top. Then you'll cover and germinate until they germinate. So for these type of containers that have a lid, you'll just slowly um, shut the lid. If you do it too fast, I've noticed seeds kind of bounce. Um, if you don't have a container, that's okay. Like that with a lid. I, for my hydroponic, I just take a piece of foil and I put it over the top of the, of the container and I poke holes for air circulation. So that you can see here that it's starting to germinate. And you really want to make sure, take a look, um, you know, look at your seeds, like, you know, are they all germinated? If they're not all germinated, cover and wait another day or two. Once they're all germinated, you can remove the cover and start to green it up. So what you do is, you can see from this picture, the, the seeds are germinated. I took the cover up, off. And then I'm gonna move it into a window where it could get 10 or more light hours or have a grow light over it. Um, so you, it's it, very interesting. Do you see how these microgreens are kind of yellow, the top of the seeds? Um, don't be surprised, you will, because you're depriving the plant of light. Um, so you know, once you expose the plant to light, um, then, you know, it'll start to get the chlorophyll and it will get green up is what we call it. So once it has that interaction um, with light and photosynthesis starts, then the chlorophyll, you know, can be produced and you'll start to see your plant turning green, which is pretty cool. It happens within a day or so. And then maintain consistent moisture. So I like to bottom water. So what that means is if I take this tray, I'll put a plate down, fill it with water, and I just let it soak until the tray is filled with water, you know, till the, the medium is fully moist. So you usually will want to do that daily. You don't need to mist anymore once you take uh, the top off. Misting it could cause mold or other things, and it's not gonna really get to the bottom. You really wanna keep those the seeds and the roots wet. So uh, misting's fine while you're waiting for the seeds to germinate, but after that, just uh, water from the bottom um, and um, that'll keep the seeds and the, 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 um, the plant from you know, growing. So how do we do hydroponic? First, we need to get some water. Um, a pH of six is ideal, but again, like I said, um, contrapost or water here from the tap is perfectly fine as well. Um, add a cup, uh, cap full of hydrogen peroxide. Um, and then so the, that water and the hydrogen peroxide would go into your base that holds all the water. You do not need to pre-soak seeds with hydroponic. They're going to have constant contact with water. Um, so when I touch that screen that my, my seeds are growing on before I sprinkle seeds, my fingers become wet. So the seeds will become wet as well. So no need to pre-soak. They'll have nice, nice contact with water. Then you're going to block the light for a couple days till they germinate. So I, I, I it didn't, you don't have to see this in this picture, but I always poke holes in there to let air circulation. Then you're going to block the light until it germinates. This tray right now started to germinate, but if you, you can see there's a lot of seeds that haven't germinated. So this is a good picture to show you. I would say give it another day or two. And when it starts to look like this picture, and let me zoom in so you can see those closer. So you can see here, there's still quite a few seeds that haven't germinated. Um, and then if you compare that to over here, they've all germinated. Um, I would wait till it looks like something like this, where majority of the seeds have germinated to take the lid off and then bring it to the window. And do you see how it's yellow within it? That's totally normal again, because you've deprived it of light. Within a day, it'll green up. Then you just put it in front of your, your grow light or your window for 10 or more hours and um, continue growing. What I like to do with all of these type of trays is every day I just turn it <laughs> so that it, the stems grow nice and straight. Because you'll see at the end of the day, it's kind of leaning a little towards the window. And um, so I just keep rotating every day to keep them growing nice and straight and strong. So now I'm gonna give you a short video where I'll take a sip of water and I'll let you guys 
um, watch this video. Let me take my, um, my laser pointer off. And I'm going to play this video for you. That'll walk you through what I just talked about. Hi, I'm going to show you how to get started microgreens using one of two methods, using a sterile growing medium and then using a hydroponic self-watering tray. So let's start with the sterile medium first. I picked a 100% recyclable wood medium <clears throat> and I have a recycled raspberry container. You want something that's flat and shallow. And then what you'll do is you'll put your growing medium down at the bottom, push it because you want as flat of a surface as possible. Next, I need to wet the growing medium. I'm gonna pour some water on a plate and I'm gonna place the container that has holes on the bottom for drainage in here to get the growing medium all wet. What I like to do is count in my head, and I'll do it out loud for you, how long it takes for the growing medium to be fully wet. That way, when you go to rewater it each time, you'll know how long it takes for everything to get evenly moist. So let's water it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten seconds is what it takes. So now what I'm going to do again is just push the medium in place. It will be a little bit wet, so you might want to grab a towel or something for it to go on until it kind of dries up a little bit. Next, I'll take my microgreen seeds. You need about one teaspoon. And I'm just, if you could give a little close up, I'm going to evenly distribute them on the grow pad. With a container this size, you need even a little bit less. You do want to make sure you leave room for air circulation. Then I'll take my sprayer, moisten the top, and I'll carefully shut it. I like to do it softly so the seeds don't bounce around. Now I will put this in a dark space for a couple days to germinate. How do I start a hydroponic? First, I take out the mesh screen that comes on top. Then I'll fill the water to the water line. Next, I put the mesh screen back on top. And you'll know you have enough water if you touch the mesh screen and your hands are wet. That's how the seeds are gonna stay wet. So let's get a teaspoon of seeds. This is a salad blend. And I'm gonna do the same thing. I just carefully, evenly put them all around the screen. Mm. Then, I do the same thing. I spray it. Then I'll cover it with a tented um, aluminum foil with holes in it and put it in a place not exposed to direct sunlight for three to four days until it germinates. Thank you. All right. So that is how you do it. And, um, you see this hydrogen peroxide right here in my video? You'll notice I forgot in the video to add it, but easy enough. Um, there's a little holes on the side of the hydroponic growing. You could just give a little squirt in there. That's what I did after I did this video. And if you forget, it's fine. I've forgotten before and it grew just fine. But I want to tell you a funny story about these microgreens. So I was growing these and I was kind of cleaning up and I put them in a drawer, which is nice and dark. Um, so they're out of the way because I had a bunch of these trays I had started kind of clean up when I had somebody coming over. Then I went away for three days <laughs> and forgot to take them out before I left. When I came back, they were really tall. They were about a, an inch tall. So uh, several days passed when I should have taken them out to put them in front of the window. And they're really yellow. And I thought, should I dump them? I'm like, nah, let's see what happens. I put them out in front. They kept growing. Within a couple of days, they turned green. Um, the kohlrabi um, stems turned purple. And here they are.
Uh, you'll see um, I, I took them and then kind of plopped them over an egg that I had for breakfast. So, you know, don't worry, microgreens are pretty, pretty uh, resilient. Um, even when you do little things like that, don't feel like you have to start all over a throw over, carry it through the end and I bet you'll get something pretty worthwhile and in, in, something you can enjoy eating. So once you've started your microgreens and they are, you know, fully, you've germinated them, you've moved them to the window, what are some tips for growing them? You've heard me say a lot about the light, bright light, 10 hours is ideal. A south facing window is going to get you the most light during the day. So that's ideal. But a western facing window, you know, some space that's going to get that amount of light. Um, and again, if you're doing a grow light, you'll want to do it for 10 hours. Um, you do not need to keep your grow lights on. In fact, you do not want to keep your grow lights on 24 hours a day. 10 hours is enough. Um, all plants need some level of light and dark during a day during for their, you know, while they grow. So getting that dark period for your plant, even if you're using um, a grow light is important. Um, if you do the lights too long, it's going to grow a lot faster and, you know, you're probably going to have a little bit less nutrition, nutritional value and flavor. Um, so 10 hours is enough. Um, water, water is super important. So you always want to make sure you have equal, consistent moisture. Um, so that's going to be very, very critical. Um, low humidity is also important. So you don't want it super hot and stuffy um, and have good air circulation. I have just my regular house. I have it on the countertop. Um, so it's, you know, fully exposed. And, you know, I keep my house at normal temperatures. Um, if you're worried about air circulation, you think it's too humid or, you know, something you could add a fan um, near your plant that will add good circulation and will actually um, adding a little bit of air circulation to plant is what can make them stronger um, when as they grow taller, um, but not necessary. I've never used a fan. Other growing tips, avoid heat pads. Um, for most seeds to germinate, they need a temperature of 65 to 75 degrees. Um, most of us keep our house to about that during the daytime and then it, dipping at night is fine. Um, heat pads could be used, um, you know, during when you're first starting seeds to germinating, but I really would not recommend that for a couple reasons for microgreens. Um, usually when you're using heat pads, you're starting seeds and it's in more soil um, and it, it might get the, the seeds a little bit too hot. Um, and if you forget to turn them off, it could affect what your microgreens look like. It's just really not necessary. So I wouldn't use it. Um, you do not want to fertilize. So again, you wanna use a, some type of sterile growing medium that doesn't have fertilizers or other things in it. Um, that's gonna give it like a really off taste. And that includes, you don't want something with compost either. There's no need to thin, you know, um, you know, if you read seed packets, it might say, you know, like you say, if you've grown carrots, um, once they germinate, you want to thin to, you know, one to two inches between each plant. That's not necessary with microgreens because what you're doing is like this beautiful picture. You want really dense, densely grown um, microgreens. So no thinning is necessary. Just let them grow and it's going to look like a nice lush carpet. You can grow different um varieties together. So you remember in the beginning, I mentioned slow growing and quick growing microgreens. If you decide to grow, you know, say two different types of plants together on one tray, just make sure that they fully develop at the same time. So you don't want to put a fast growing and a slow growing um, seed on the same tray, because then it's going to be inconsistent. You'll have some that will be really short and some that will be tall. Um, so you want to grow things that are going to mature at the same amount of time, at the same pace. Um, a lot of times if you buy, like I buy, buy a salad blend, um, the people, the seed companies that put those together will be taking that into consideration. So they're packaging those blends with things that grow, you know, at the same maturity rate. Um, but if you're doing it on your own, that's just something to be, um, you know, aware of. So now you've grown them and you're ready to do the good part, to harvest them and eat them. So the timing of when you harvest depends on the plant variety. Again, like I mentioned, slow growing, quick growing. So it's going to be anywhere from, you know, on average about two weeks, it's going to take some a little bit longer. 
you'll know it's ready when you obviously have your cotyledons, the, the um, you're gonna have um, the greens at the top and they're gonna be about one to three inches in height. So that's the right length that you're gonna want to grow your microgreens to. Once they are at that level, they're ready to be clipped. Again, use scissors, make sure they're sterilized or clean. I just run mine through, you know, the dishwasher um, to make sure they're nice and clean. And you'll just, I just grab the handful that I want and then trim it all the way at the bottom. So you could see where I cut right here. This is a tray of broccoli that I grew. So you just cut what you want um, with scissors. That's pretty simple. Um, how do you store it? So I like to just store mine on the countertop. I keep watering it and I just clip as I go because I like to put them on my salads or um, on my eggs in the morning, especially for a little extra greens in the morning. Um, you could also store it in your refrigerator. So once it reaches that one to two, three inches in height, um, you could put it in your refrigerator for about one week. What you don't want to do is wash your microgreens. They're going to rot really easily. So if you, you know, cut them off, wrap them in a paper towel in an airtight container, um, store them that way, or I just put the container itself in the refrigerator. Um, what do you do when you're all, when you're done with it? Um, I just take the growing medium and I put it in the green waste bin. If you have a compost, uh, a, a worm bin, you could certainly put it in that. Um, from for you know using it as compost or green waste, um, and with the hydroponic, I you literally can just pull off the roots, and I also put that in the green waste or in my worm bin as well. And then you want to sanitize the container. So if you're going to be reusing the containers, you want to sanitize them. The hydroponic, I just put that in um, the dishwasher, and um, it comes out perfectly sanitized. Um, for like the plastic containers. Um, you could use a little bit of pine sole and water um, or um, a water and bleach mixture, one part bleach to nine parts water. And just really then I would, if you're going to be, um, you know, then I would then, since you're, you know, going to be touching food on there, I would really rinse it and wash it with soap very, very well. That's how you'll sanitize it. So um, last up is some common growing issues and then how to enjoy and then lots of questions. So. One question you might have is you open up that container and to check to see if your seeds are germinating and you see this, you think, my goodness, this is what I thought when I first grew microgreens. What is this? Is this mold um, on my seeds? Um, and the answer is, nope, it's not mold. What it is, these are actually root hairs. So we don't usually get to see those because when we're starting plants from seeds, um, the roots are growing below the surface, but we're growing microgreens on top of the surface. So when they first start germinating, you are going to see these root hairs. So when you're taking the top off, you will see these. So what I usually do is I just spray them and you'll for sure know that they're root hairs. If you spray them, they kind of go away. Um, if it's you still see that fuzzy stuff after you sprayed it, you might have mold and you want to throw that away and then start again but this is very typical that you'll see. So just spray it with water. Um, it'll go away if there are the root hairs. So what happens if you have droopy, droopy microgreens? It's probably most likely either you're giving it too much sun or you need to increase the moisture. So again, just make sure your container, um, your growing medium always is nice and moist. That's gonna help prevent droopy microgreens. What about if it's really, really leggy? A lot of times you see leggy plants because they're kind of reaching, trying to reach towards the sun or trying to find light. Um, you know, if you've ever grown a plant like on a patio, it's usually going to be kind of reaching and a little bit leggy trying to find the light. You just want to increase the light. So maybe move it to a different spot, um, add a grow light or find a spot that has a longer light hours. Again, 10 plus hours. What about if your seeds just aren't germinating? They're kind of not even getting to this point where you start to see the cotyledons. There's a couple things that could be the reason. Uh, again, going back to water, <laughs> you've heard me say it, your growing medium maybe is not moist enough, so work on the moisture. You might have it too hot or too cold. Remember about 70 degrees is ideal, 65 to 75. Maybe your seeds weren't a very good quality. That could definitely impact it. Maybe they weren't stored properly or they're really old um, and have a really low germination rate. 
Um, so those are all things to think about if you're not finding that your seeds are germinating. So how do you enjoy? There's so many different ways. I told you, I showed you the picture of um, the microgreens on top of a uh, my eggs in the morning. I love it that way. I've been to restaurants where there's like a little corn salad at a Mexican food restaurant. And they put cilantro greens on top. They're great in tacos, on top of salads, great on top of fish or meats. Um, pastas. I mean, it's great to put like a little basil microgreens on top of pasta to get some more of that basil flavor with your spaghetti sauce um, in spring rolls or as a garnish. Um, I also love sprinkling them on top of like cheeses that I have on a dessert platter. Um, some of them are beautiful colors. They could be purple or bright pink. So it adds really pretty element um, to your food. Um, and it's something fun to talk about. <laughs> At least for me, it is. So we're just going to go through really quick what we've talked about and then open it up for questions. And this is a nice picture of the Adaptive Learning Center um, of a class uh, that I taught there on growing microgreens. So first thing you want to think about is what do you want to grow it in, tray or hydroponic? Then you want to gather up all your supplies. Again, that's probably going to take the longest, including purchasing your seeds. You can soak the seeds if they're larger in size. If you're growing hydroponic, you don't need to. You want to place your seeds on that growing medium. Make sure that it's moist um, or put it on a mesh screen if you're growing hydroponically. Find a bright window that has 10 plus hours of sunlight. Make sure you maintain consistent moisture for your growing medium on your tray um, and harvest uh, once your microgreens are about one to three inches um, and they have um, the cotyledons, so not when the first true leaves are there and then garnish it. Use as a garnish or enjoy however you would like. And that, all my friends who've joined tonight, is growing microgreens. So we have one more poll, then we're gonna talk a little bit about some of our programs, and then at the end, uh, get all your questions in. I'd love to answer them. So we can launch the poll. All right, so after you've listened to me talk tonight, what are you interested um, to um, do? Oh, let's see. Can we um, launch poll number two, please? I think this is the first one. I'm going to end that poll. Uh, Serenity or uh, Terry, can you guys launch poll number two, please? There we go. All right. So what's your next step in your micro green journey? Select all that apply. I'll give you time to read through. I'm really curious to hear after hearing me talk tonight, what are some things that you are going to do? We'll give folks some time to respond and then I'll uh, kind of call out some of our uh, most popular things people are going to do. The fun starts after tonight. <laughs> All right, we've got about half of you. Go ahead and if you haven't already, cast your vote. Looks like it's slowing down. All right. All right. Like everyone who voted want to, can we publish those results for the group to see? So it looks like 69% of you are going to buy seeds to grow for the first time. That is amazing. I love to hear that, that there's so many of you that are going to be starting this micro journey for the first time, micro green journey. And again, this is on YouTube. So if you want to replay bit by bit, you can. Um, and it looks like almost 50% of you are going to try growing on um, a grow pad like coconut bar or um, a wood or one of the other growing mediums. It looks like over half of you are going to try growing in hydroponic. I highly recommend it. Um, it, it makes for, a, it's a lot uh, simpler and faster. And it looks like 45% of you are going to try to incorporate new ways to eat microgreens um, in your meals. That's amazing. Um, so those are some of the top ones. I'm glad to see there's so many things that you guys are going to try doing with microgreens. So I'm going to turn off my cursor.
And um, I will move to the next slide and uh, let Terry talk about our program before we get to some questions. Great, thank you very much, Andrea. It was a great um, talk, lots of questions to discuss. <laughs> so um, very, very good. All right, so we wanna let everyone know that um, the Contra Costa uh, Master Gardener website is a source of a lot of information. Um, and on that, you can um, find out a lot about what we're offering and uh, tools to help you. Next slide. Sure. And um, this is our webinar lineup uh, for the rest of the year. So you can see we've done our first talk. Our next one is growing citrus. And you can see on the list that um, we've got some great talks um, throughout the year. Great. Next slide. OK, um, we are uh, going to give you a survey here in a minute. <clears throat> and um, basically, what's going to happen is we're going to go into the, the uh, Q&A. We're going to answer some questions live. Um, and while we're there, we will um, put on a, a survey um, QR code, and that helps us get the information that we need to help improve our um, talks for you and to improve our program. So I encourage you to do that. One thing I want to let you know <clears throat> is that uh, when you complete the um, survey, uh, what we will do is send you the handout in the next um, day or so. The handout that, that's going to come up after you um, do the survey is going to be for a previous talk. So that's a technical glitch that we have, um, but we will send you the uh, microgreen handout. Next slide. All right, so for questions then, um, the first one um, that- It will be really quick to put up the, the hand the QR code slide. Um, you, you can put it, yeah, you can put it up. Um, and as I said, um, uh, please do fill out the survey and then the handout will be for previous um, uh, conversation. So, all right. The first question is, um, how is it that um, people growing microgreens can avoid botulism or salmonella? Okay, so one of the things that you, there's a couple different things, um, avoiding using uh, fertilizers or compost, um, things like, you know, chicken manure, those different type of things that might contain, um, you know, diff you know, different bacteria or other things. Um, that's going to be one way to make sure you prevent it. Another way is making sure that you buy organic seeds that aren't chemically treated. Um, that's going to be really important as well, and that you're buying high quality seeds that have been stored properly. Um, additionally, um, you also do not want to overhead water. Um, that could create different bacteria and mold on your plants. You want to do that bottom watering. Um, cause if you think about it, if you're overhead watering, it's going to, you're not watering the bottom where the roots are. You're rot watering the green and they're so densely populated. You're not going to get your water down, um, which could create bacteria and other things from growing. So making sure you use a sterile growing medium or grow pad um, and water from the bottom, not the top, and buying good quality seeds will help prevent that. Thank you. Uh, during the talk, um, you share different types of growing trays or containers, and in there, um, there was a glass tray was that to illustrate a specific point or are we just showing that she could use glasses as, as well? Um, well, that's a good question. That's a good question. So that, that is a very observant participant that does not have drainage holes. So the purpose of that is that you can use anything you want at home, but I wouldn't use a container. If, the, if there's a glass container that's specifically for growing a pot that has holes in the bottom, um, that would be fine. Um, but um, if it doesn't have a drainage hole in it, you don't want to use it. Um, it'll be really, you can't bottom water with it. Um, but you can look around your house 
for things that you have um, without having to go buy new things, as long as it's flat, at least half an inch in height and has drainage holes. Okay, great. I know in the, um, in the handout, there will be some description about fast growing, slow growing microgreens <clears throat> yep. and a reference to a book that lists a lot of them. But during the talk, there were lots of questions about, can you grow this as a microgreen or that as a microgreen? And I see a question now that says, is there anything that you really shouldn't, you know, can't grow as a microgreen? There are a few, you know, really anything that you can grow as a vegetable or as an herb you can grow. There is, I did see in this book I was reading, the one that's in the handout, it does mention a couple things that you cannot grow. Bear with me. I will, I don't think there are things that particularly interested me. And I will try to find that as I um as I look through this, we might need to come through it as I flip through my book, but there are just okay. a couple of things um, that you don't want to grow. And I'll try to find that in this book. Um, okay. But again, most, most herbs and vegetables you can grow just fine as microgreens. Okay. Um, and uh, someone asked whether or not you, if you grow um, hydroponically, for example, um, can you eat the roots? Are they um, are they edible, nutritious, and flavorful? No, you don't want to eat the roots. So when you're harvesting microgreens, the seeds at the bottom, you do not want to eat those, and you don't want to eat the uh, roots. You just want to eat the stems and the leaves. Okay, and that is a food safety issue. It is a food safety issue. Yeah. Okay. When That's you pull that tray off. You'll see the water gets a little murky, um, even if you're using putting the hydro gym peroxide in that, um, but the roots really aren't meant for consumption. Um, neither are the seeds, um, you know, because you really want, you know, for food safety to just eat the stems and the leaves. Okay. Um, are there some cheaper growing trays for hydroponics? Um, that tray that I showed, I think was like $29.99. Um, so, um, if you can, you know, I would suggest like doing a Google search, um, online. Um, it, it's hard to make your own at home because you need the holes so small that, so the seeds won't fall through. Um, so that it was about 30 bucks for the one that I'm showing in this presentation. Um, but I encourage you, you know, do a little Google search to see if you could find other containers. There might be some out there that are less expensive than that. Okay. Um, there was a number of questions about water, um, some have been, uh, answered. You had mentioned that, um, you know, slightly acidic is good, but with the pH of, of eight or so that there was no problem. What, what if the pH is 10, you know, what if there's chlorine, can I use water from my hot tub, um. Yeah, so um, two things can affect, uh, two things in water will affect seeds um, when you're growing, chlorine and pH. If you're using, you definitely don't ever want to use pool water or, um, you know, um, water from a river or you want to use tap water or you want to use bottled water. Um, again, our, the water here is um, fine um, from a, it is a little bit, you know, higher 8.5 versus seven, but uh, or six, but that's okay. And really it's a little, you need a little bit more acidic for hydroponic, not necessarily if you're doing it in a grow tray. Um, chlorine, some municipal waters, not necessarily here in Contra Costa County, but there are some municipal water districts that do add chlorine um, to help with, you know, bacteria or other things from growing. You could usually smell or taste that. Um, if you have chlorinated water that, you know, your water district adds chlorine, a um, couple things that you could do, you could um, just put it in an open bowl on, you know, on your table or countertop for 24 hours. Most of the chlorine will evaporate within 24 hours. Um, you could also boil it or, um, you know, buy bottled water as an alternative. Okay. All right. I am going to just stick to two more uh, questions. One is, is can you use clay as a growing medium? And then the second one is um, a number of people have asked where to purchase the seeds. 
Mm -hmm. So no on clay. Um, clay is usually like our soil, na native soil here in Contra Costa County is in some most parts, not all parts of our county, is more clayey. Um, you don't want to use any type of natural soil from outside. It could have pathogens or other things that are going to, um, you know, um, impact the quality or the ability of your seeds to germinate. Clay also, if you think about if you take clay and try to pour water on it, it's going to pull up the top and maybe take a really long time <laughs> to go through. You want something that's light and fluffy and airy um, to grow your seeds on. So that's why something like coconut coir or these growing pads um, that aren't going to drown, you know, that when you water it won't drown, um, but just water of your seeds. So you def uh, I, Clay, I would definitely not suggest using that. Okay. Great. Well, I think um, that it's time. Um, well, let me just see here. I got a little note. Um, I just want to mention one more time that the handout that is uh, associated with the QR code that is on the screen is a handout from a talk from last year. It is not the handout for this talk. So the handout for this talk will be sent um, to participants uh, tomorrow. And um, please fill out the survey and then we'll have your, uh, your email address and uh, we can send that to you. Oh, and Terry, the, the last question, you, you asked me two questions. People wanted to know where to buy seeds. Yes. Okay. Um, so I'd say start off, you could just go simple, go to your local garden center, you know, look for organic seeds, look at the seed packets to make sure that they're not really old. So they will say, you know, the package or harvest date of the seed. So look for that. You want that to be pretty recent. Um, and you could also just do a Google search. As Master Gardeners, we're not allowed to recommend any particular vendor. I definitely have some that are my favorites. You could just type in, you know, in a search engine, microgreen seeds, and you'll pop up some good seed catalogs that sell microgreen supplies and a lot of different seeds. So um, that is my suggestion on how to do it. Go to your local store um, or do a little search online and you could find um, a, a like a lot of different really interesting options. Great. Okay. Well, thank you um, very much, Andrea. And thank you okay. uh, to everyone who took time out of their evening to participate. And uh, hopefully it dries out for all of us in the near future. <laughs> I know that some people got a good soaking, lost power and uh, had some exciting times today. Um, so we'll call that a wrap then. And um Good night to everyone. Thank you. Happy microgreen growing. Thank you. Thanks. Good night. Bye. Good night. Bye-bye.